Elon Musk goes. Perhaps you've heard of it. I think we're, we can do at least two trillion. Yeah! If we don't do this, America will go bankrupt. Looking at what Trump is and Musk say they're going to do, you can expect a serious crisis in this year and the next year out of the cut in the government deficit. 20th century and beginning of the 21st, the government has run deficits, not surpluses. The only uh, sustained periods of surpluses have been in the 1920s and the late uh, 1990s, early 2000s. Read those very unhappy with you. If you are well, throw them out of here. <laughs> but if Trump behaved like Calvin Coolidge, then we're going to see a recession. At least five inspector generals that were looking into Elon Musk's companies were fired by the Trump Musk administration. Influential contrarian economist Steve Keen. Brilliant economist that criticizes much of modern economics. The research fellow at the Institute for Strategy, Resilience and Security at University College in London. He is someone that each and every one of us has to listen to whether we agree or disagree. Here's Steve Keen. To steal a line from a great book, in the beginning was the word and the word was doge. Here is Trump introducing both Doge and Elon Musk to the United States Congress. To further combat inflation, we will not only be reducing the cost of energy, but we'll be ending the flagrant waste of taxpayer dollars. And to that end, I have created the brand new Department of Government Efficiency, GOES, perhaps you've heard of it, which is headed by Elon Musk, who is in the gallery tonight. What is Doge supposed to do? The main focus, as well as getting rid of government waste, is to eliminate the deficit. Elon Musk, as was recently confirmed, is set to become the head of what he calls the Department of Government Efficiency, or, you guessed it, Doge for short. I think the funniest name is, is D-O-G-E, the, the Doge, the <laughs> Department, <laughs> Doge. Of Gov Department of Government Efficiency. And from what he said so far, it seems his primary goal is to simply cut out all the waste and inefficiency that's currently seen in the government. And from my research, this all boils down to two key objectives. One, reducing the government deficit, and two, deregulation. Now, I'll talk about both, but I want to start with the idea of reducing the deficit. And so do I. So let's actually take a look at the data and see if there's been any previous period in America's history where the government has actually reduced the deficit. And you can find that by going to the GovInfo site, and you'll find a table there uh, called Summary of Receipts, Outlays and Surpluses or Deficits from 1789 to 2029. And if you look at that data, I'll show it in my Ravel software here. Uh, what you can see, 20th century and beginning of the 21st, the government has run deficits, not surpluses. The only uh, sustained periods of surpluses have been in the 1920s and the late uh, 1990s, early 2000s. This is under President Calvert Coolidge, and this was under Clinton but it continued under Bush as well. Now let's look at the attitude of the, those two presidents to what they were doing and what they thought the impact would be on their economy. And we can find that uh, the first one with Calvin Coolidge's uh, State of the Union address in 1928, December 1928, unfortunately not recorded, uh, but here we find the words. And he opened with a wonderful opening line, no Congress of the United States ever assembled on surveying the state of the union has met with a more pleasing prospect than that which appears at the pleasant time. And why was it a pleasing prospect? Because we have been coming into a period which may fairly be characterized as conservation of our national, national resources, wastefulness in public business and private enterprise has been displaced by constructive economy. And by constructive economy, what he meant was a drastic reduction in government spending and taxation. Four times we've made drastic revision of our internal revenue system, abolishing many taxes and substantially reducing almost all others. Each time the resulting stimulation to business has so increased taxable incomes and profits that a surplus has been produced and one third of the national debt has been repaid. So we know the 1920s were a time of prosperity. What about the 1930s? Not so good. Let's take a look at the data. Again, this is in my Ravel software, and I've just focused here on the period 1921 to 29. And if you just look at that time period, everything from conventional thinking looks great. Falling level of government debt, uh, the numbers here don't quite line up with the numbers from the GovInfo site, it's for the US Census numbers here, but the same basic story, either very small deficits or surpluses for the whole time period. And what you saw was a substantial growth a very negative start to it because of going back on the gold standard and the, the end of World War I and so on, but positive growth all the way through the 1920s, falling unemployment and very benign inflation, low rates of inflation, and in the final few years, actually falling prices. They're not falling very substantially. Now, what happens if we just extend the time period and go from 1929 out to 1940? Then everything looks very different. 
we get a substantial increase in government debt, a deficit running up to 8% of GDP. And of course, the reason was a drastic co collapse in the economy. Growth went from being uh, of the order of 7% to minus 30%. Deflation, falling prices became extreme at 10% per annum, and unemployment rose from 4 or 5% to 25% of the employable population of the states out of a job. It was a deadly period. So what on earth happened? You have to look at something other than the government sector. You've got to look at private debt as well. So you can see this period of falling debt here, and I'll just go back. So I'm focusing just on the uh, on that 1929 period now. If we take a look at private debt as well as government debt, what we see that is that while government debt was falling, private debt was rising as a low of about 100 and 38%, it rose to 160%. So as the government was cutting its debt by a small amount each year, the private sector was increasing it by substantially more. And if you look at the credit, which is the change in private debt as a percentage of GDP, and compare that to the deficit, you see that the increase in credit-based money far outweighed what was happening with the government sector. So the government's reducing its uh, deficit, going into negative, uh, rather having a surplus rather than a deficit, but at the same time, the private sector is borrowing up to 8% of GDP per year. Now, is there a relationship uh, with that to the rate of economic activity? We bet your bottom dollar it is. I'll show you using the uh, data under the uh, Clinton and Bush period, because of course, we know that there was a global financial crisis after the Clinton and Bush administrations. If we now look at private debt, as well as government debt here, you see the same story as the 1920s, a drastic increase in private debt. So if I, again, that's, that's over the whole post-war period. Let's just uh, dive in here and look at a bit more detail on the, the period between uh, Clinton and uh, uh, the end of the Bush administration. That's starting in 19, that's started 1988, go to 2015, roughly. And then what you see is this period of, as the government's reducing its debt, the private sector is drastically increasing its debt. We have the, the deficit falling and becoming a surplus at the same time as credit rises from of the order of 2% uh, of GDP to 15% of GDP. And then for the first time in post-war history, it goes negative. Credit goes from plus 15% to about minus 5% of GDP. The same story turns up in the economic data as well, not as severe as the Great Depression, but the same basic story. You have economic growth all the way through uh, except for the 2000 recession. But then you get a serious drop in the rate of economic growth. You have inflation uh, running at 5% of GDP, 5% per annum, going down to minus two, so deflation again, and a drastic increase in the unemployment rate. The patterns are the same. And if I take a look at the uh, relationship of unemployment to credit, we see an overwhelming correlation between the two, and it's more than correlation. This is causation. Rising credit is causing falling unemployment because rising credit causes rising economic activity. Credit going from positive to negative drastically turns things around. You go from low unemployment to high, high unemployment. Uh, we have had two periods where the government has obsessed about eliminating its deficit and the private sector has responded by borrowing large amounts of money from the private banks and then speculating on the stock market in the 1920s, on housing in the 2000s. We got a bubble and then a bust in both cases. And is there a causal relationship between these, first of all, good and then disastrous uh, economic stats, and then what's happening with both government spending and the borrowing by the private sector? And we can look at this in another aspect of Ravel, which is its capacity to model financial transactions. And what I've got here is a model, very simple model, of the government running a deficit, which increases the amount of money in the economy, uh, of the private sector borrowing money, which also increases the amount of money in the economy. And I've set up the numbers so that it roughly corresponds to the situation for the, uh, uh, for the beginning of the 1920s. And I have the government running a surplus and a negative deficit. So a negative deficit of uh, minus, I just actually, that's minus 1% of GDP per annum. And I've got credit running at 5%. In fact, it was higher as you saw, from like about 8% according to the uh, figures by the uh, United States Census. So I run that combination of numbers with the government running a, a surplus and the private sector uh, borrowing money in, in credit at 5% of GDP per annum, you get a growing economy, rising level of private debt to GDP, as we saw in the data, falling level of government debt to GDP. Uh, overall, looks good, okay? What went wrong? Well, what went wrong is that the economy did not boom because of the surplus as Coolidge was running. It actually grew more slowly, and the private sector responded by borrowing money 
the gamble on share prices, you had the roaring 20s, and then the whole crash occurred after that. What would have happened if the private sector didn't borrow that money? What would have happened to the rate of economic growth? So I've turned off credit now, that's actually gone to zero. Uh, and I've got still got a 1% surplus being run by the government. You run that and you don't get a rising GDP, you get a falling GDP. Running a surplus takes money out of the economy. That's why it slows it down. So the whole idea that you can make the economy grow more rapidly by slashing government spending actually turns out to be the reverse of the truth. Now, if you have the government running a deficit, and I'll now put that inside here, so a 1% of GDP deficit rather than surplus, you get a rising GDP out of that with no credit and a falling level of, of uh, private debt uh, because there's no change in private debt while the economy is increasing inside, a rise in government debt, but nothing, nothing deadly about that. Uh, this, what, what it actually happens, and this is what politicians and mainstream economists just simply are not aware of, is that when you run a government surplus, you take money out of circulation. When you run a deficit, you put money into circulation. The deficit itself is the way you create fiat money. And if you stop creating fiat money, you have a downturn in the economy. Now, looking at what Trump is and, and Musk say they're going to do, you can expect a serious crisis in this year and the next year out of the cut in the government deficit. At the same time, uh, what Trump is promising in terms of, terms of tax cuts for the wealthy may well reverse that, steam, that, that depressing impact. So there's no guarantee yet we're going to see a serious recession. But if Trump behaved like Calvin Coolidge, and that's a stretch, but if he did and actually cut government spending and, and didn't give large amounts of money away in tax cuts, then we're going to see a recession. If you're like many other truth seekers and want to learn 50 years of real economics from me in only seven weeks, you'll have my new seven-week Rebel Economist Challenge as well. To apply, go to apply.stevecanefree.com. If you qualify, you can attend my lectures, ask me questions personally every week, and make friends with a great group of like-minded people. So again, like many others, go to apply.stevecanefree.com to apply as well for the seven-week Rebel Economist Challenge. Good luck.